2023, everyone. So, you know how Genshin Impact has this weird and convoluted way of saying their stories? Well, today I'm going to be giving you one or two, or, you know, I don't have any self-control, secret about the Mondstadt characters that you may or may not know about based on their lore. The facts I'm getting are mostly from the character profiles, voice lines, and character stories, instead of the story quests and hangouts. Since most of the time, these blocks of text are usually overlooked by players, so I feel like it's much cooler for me to just go through these ones instead. So here here we go. Albedo. So, Albedo actually has two interesting points of contention. One is that Albedo lists the Sages of Alchemy to create the magnum opus in his voice lines as Negretto, Albedo, Rubido, and Citrinitus, when the correct order, or at least the order that we know from our world, is Negretto, Albedo, Citrinitus, and then Rubido. I wonder how that would affect his studies. Albedo's lore also has a lot of references to geological time periods. The names of his two constellations are references to the Phanerozoic Era, which is the current geological eon in which abundant animals and plant life has existed. Tide of Hadean is an era which the Earth was subjected to hellish conditions and created some of the earliest known rocks on the planet. His title from the drop of the wolf mobs labeled him as Cretaceous, which is a reference to the Cretaceous period where chalk or crida was a very prevalent substance. Also, Albedo eats spiders. Just a thought that you should know. Amber. Amber is part Liyuan. Her grandfather came from Liyue Harbor and was once a leader of a mercenary group tasked with protecting merchant caravans as they traversed Sivat. Another cool fact about Amber is that she is also known as the Crimson Knight according to the lore, which actually overlaps that title with the title of Klee's theme song, Let's Go Crimson Knight. So technically, if you ask who is the Crimson Knight in the Knights of Avonius, you'd legally have two answers. Barbara. I actually have three fun facts about Barbara. The first fun fact is pretty well known. Barbara's full name is Barbara Pegg, daughter of Seamus Pegg, the fella you see in the manga. The second one is more of a thematic analysis of her story. A cool fun fact about Barbara's career as an idol is that it's actually comparable to Sinyan's, but the core difference is the audience that received them. Barbara's music, at first, sounded strange to the people of Mondstadt, and a lot of people struggled to see the appeal. But because unlike Liyue, Mondstadt traditions focuses heavily on freedom, people learn to accept the new while continuing to cherish the old. The third fun fact is that she only allows herself to be depressed for 30 seconds. Okay, I lied, there's one more fun fact about Barbara. It's the fact that despite being a Catalyst user in the game, Barbara actually has a level of knowledge about swordplay. That was one of the things that she wanted to surpass Jean of, but it never came to fruition. Bennett Bennett is one of the fewest characters in Genshin to feature a very close death scene in their storylines. Most characters feature an aspect of their personality in which grew from tribulation, but never usually a distinct scene that they're actively in danger. Bennett's story 5 in the story of how he got his vision has themes of death. His vision story states that he almost perished through a hellish journey because of blood loss, and what was even more upsetting was that he found nothing at the end of that journey. Furthermore, his character Story 5 actually ponders about the concept of death to him as an adventurer. This is because he feels that adventurers will not have weeping funerals, but instead toasts and legacies that bards will sing for longer times. His story ends bittersweetly with the strange line that he now feels death may be something fortunate to an adventurer. D. Luke. Diluc actually has connections to an unknown underground intelligence network in which he is a pretty reputable member of. This network was actually made up of volunteers, and many of its members had willingly given up their positions and reputations to join. The identities of other members are unknown, however. Diluc is actually a pretty high-ranking member of this network, almost to the same stature and reputation as his previous position in the Knights of Avonius. Another fascinating fact was before he joined the underground intelligence network, Diluc narrowly escaped death at the hands of the Harbinger. Diona. Diona oftentimes plays with Klee, but while she wants to destroy the Mondstadt wine industry, she actually steers Klee away from the taverns in fear of the explosives and alcohol. I just find that really interesting since she says she doesn't want to destroy Mondstadt wine industry that way. Eula. Eula has monthly tea breaks with Jean. In one of her character stories, she marches towards Jean's office with her great sword, which causes worry to two recruits. However, it turns out that she's having a tea break with the acting grandmaster. Another cool fact about Eula is that Eula's use of vengeance isn't necessarily out of genuine threat or my father will hear about this vibes. It's actually described as a shield of some sorts, and that it's a figure of speech. Eula's stern words are a form of self-preservation. 
referred to in her character story 1 as a strange magic spell that seizes conflict immediately without ever having to escalate the situation. While her vengeance is a form of her wanted right the wrongs of her clan, she views her attitude as nothing short of a survival mechanism. One final fact about Eula is that she's also a very great cook. Fischl. If you played the Golden Apple Archipelago with her, you already most likely know the secrets of Princess Fischl. Her real name is Amy, and Fischl is nothing short of a story. A cool fun fact about Fischl is her position in the Adventurer's Guild. She is in charge of reconnaissance and investigation. This is mostly because of Oz being a very versatile familiar. Unlike Ito's Ushi, Amber's Sabir Bunny, and Changling's Goba, Oz and Fischl connect like a true familiar master combo. Oz is almost an extension of Fischl, and she's able to inspect long distances through Oz's eyes. Also, there's a book known as the Fischl Dictionary. Jean A really cute tidbit about Jean is that she loves romance novels, which only makes the fact that she's one of the few characters that have a detailed separation in her history a little sadder. Jean's a sucker for the sentimental emotions of romance. As for her family, we already know the names of her father and sister quite well, but her mother's real name is Frederica. She also actually didn't have that close of a relationship with Barbara, and the relationship we see on screen took a substantial bit of effort. Jean was left to her mother, while Barbara was left in her father's care. When they eventually got older, Jean herself couldn't say anything when faced with Barbara's eyes. It also didn't help that Barbara, at some point in her childhood, shared some envy for Jean's abilities. Needless to say, the fact that now in the story these seem quite close and comfortable with each other is quite heartwarming. Kaya's origins are Conrian, in which before being taken in by Creepus, he was told that he was the last hope of his distant homeland. Kaya would never forget the look of both hope and hatred in his father's eyes as he uttered those words. In truth, he was an agent of Conria placed in Mondstadt to serve their interests. Kaya's true allegiance is currently unknown. But what is certain is that he feels a strong conflict towards the ancient plot and responsibility given to him. It was because of his conflicted resolve that caused him to confide in Diluc and eventually led to the battle that broke the relationship. Another less unsettling fact about Kaya is that he refers to the Traveler as underage in his voice lines, but whether he actually believes it is unknown. Kali Klee's intelligence and overall life experience is a fascinating topic of consideration because of two factors. One is that despite her childish personality, Klee is able to make her own bombs and even has her own workshop. Klee is a gifted pyromaniac and definitely inherits her resourcefulness and borderline scientific attitude from both her mother Alice and her big brother Albedo. She even spends her time in solitary confinement thinking of new gunpowder formulas. Second is that Klee is from a race gifted with longevity, as mentioned in 1.6's Golden Apple Archipelago. This puts her true life duration for consideration. Lisa Lisa was almost the captain of the 8th Company of the Knights of Avonius before she declined her position. The company's field officer named Nift refuted this idea and resented the possibility that an academic would come in at such a high-ranking officer. Needless to say, Lisa doesn't particularly care for this position. So when Kaya proposed a combat-based session to gauge magical proficiency, Lisa just declined the captaincy two minutes into the session. Another cool fun fact about Lisa is that her main curiosity as an academic are elements and visions, or more specifically, the potential cause and benefits of possessing accumulated and concentrated power. She believes that the gods would never just give something as powerful as a vision without any kind of consequences. Mona Mona hangs out with Albedo and Klee, mostly to get a free meal and to share pointers with Albedo. Another cool fun fact is that Mona writes an astrology column for the Court of Fontaine's mainline newspaper known as the Steambird. It's known as All Things Astrological and was actually criticized for being too academic, though that ended up not being a problem since readers didn't really have to get it, just that they find it interesting. One final cool fun fact about Mona was that her vision was a gift to her rather than simply appearing like most characters. This really puts into contention how fate eventually gives visions to the characters, especially since it seems that some characters can be given masterless or unactivated visions that require a proper source. Noelle Evening is the time that Noelle is the busiest, since she is the one mostly coordinating the uniform, clothes, meals, or knickknacks that the Knights of Avonius use every day. The maids of the knights have many red lines that are not to be crossed, and one of them is that the personal information of the knights must be kept in strict confidence. This does not only require restricting outsider access to such information, this restriction also applies to the other members of the knights. For example, what Jean keeps in her private quarters, the contents of Amber's barren bunny, the number of special eye patches that Kaya owns, the number of Klee's hidden bomb caches, these things are all top secret. 
To avoid leaking such information, Noel uses red cloth to make a great many roses. In Mondstadt, this flower means my lips are sealed. Razor Most of Razor's character stories have been opened up in the latest Mondstadt event quest. Razor's name card, however, is one of the few descriptions that reference other characters. His name card, Woven Spirit, mentions Klee. Rosaria Rosaria has exceptional strength and knows the weaknesses of the human body. Rosaria is also one of the many characters under the Mondstadt roster that was not born and bred in Mondstadt. She's instead from a remote mountain village and was raised by bandits and crooks. Sucrose First weird fun fact about Sucrose is that as someone studying the makeup of organic life, she usually requires bones for her work. Not just common animal bones, but also a complete lizard skeleton and even a bunch of hilly trail leg bones still bearing fresh blood. She prefers bones with blood and meat still on them, so take that as you will. Another fun fact about Sucrose is that Albedo had to organize a mandatory 7-day vacation for her, which ended up being a disaster because she was so bored. She gave up after one day. Venti while Venti has a reputation of being an Archon and therefore can be trusted in terms of knowing history, Venti has actively fabricated stories of Barbados when he gets his muse going, and it's not like anyone can really prove his faking it. Well, at least, not quick enough. Historians will oftentimes have to actively spend years to truly decipher Barbados' ruses. Such was the case when Venti forged Morax's signature by making it seem as though the aristocrats were selling off their own men to Liyue. This caused a massive uprising and revolt amongst the soldiers of aristocrats because they thought they were getting sold out to the neighboring nation despite their loyalty to the noble houses. Turns out the contract stating all of this was nothing short of a forgery. And now, that's it for the Monset characters. Just some cool fun facts about them based on their characters' stories. But that's it for me today. My name is Aster and thank you for chilling with me. Your regularly scheduled lore will be up and running.